By now you may have seen quite a few reviews of the Ars Imago Lab Box, a daylight loadable developing tank for film. But mine's going to be a little different. A lot of the reviews I've seen were by people who got free demo units, and in one case the reviewer didn't even read the instructions. Mine's a little different. I researched this, I bought one with my own money, and here's what I thought, including a free bonus tip. Most people who want to start out developing black and white film at home begin with something like this, which I'll call a starter tank. This is a really well-designed, time-proven system that's easy to learn and it's very versatile. For most people, I think it's your best choice. But you do have to load a conventional tank in a dark room or a changing bag, and that makes some people uncomfortable. The lab box is designed to give them an alternative. You can load it in normal light, but it does take dexterity and practice. This isn't a new idea. The design is based on the Agfa Rondinax tanks that go all the way back to the 1930s and have been cloned by various other manufacturers. What Ars Imago has done is make it possible to develop either roll film or 35mm film in the same tank by a system of interchangeable modules. The key advantage of the lab box is that you can develop film without using a darkroom or changing bag because you can see at all times what you're doing as you load it. The real action happens under the lid, where a clip and a band draw the film onto the reel as you turn a knob. Another advantage of the lab box is that compared to a conventional tank, it's really a pretty tidy operation. The old Rondinax tanks had a reputation for dripping, but the lab box uses a high quality automotive type seal on the knob shaft that keeps them pretty much drip free. But there are substantial drawbacks as well. For one thing, the lab box is considerably more expensive than a conventional tank, and it's limited to one roll at a time, period. You also have to be careful to wash, rinse, and dry the tank after each use, and it's considerably more complicated than a conventional tank, which has only a few simple parts. This is what's inside the lab box, and you will have to wash and carefully dry it every time. I had some quality concerns with the lab box as well. Some of the parts you had to assemble have molded in markings that are difficult to read or are printed so faintly that it's hard to see them to line them up correctly. I had a lot of trouble putting together the film guide, which is a critically important part. It was hard to understand how to assemble it, and one of the sides of it had flashings inside that I had to file. Turning over the main body and seeing this blob of hot glue didn't make me feel any more confident either. I worked around these problems eventually, but there's no denying that loading the lab box takes a lot of dexterity and practice. The first few times I tried to use it, even after practice, it took me as much as 10 minutes to get everything lined up, correctly clipped, and loaded into the tank properly. Finally though, I found a better way to do it. This is with the 35mm reel. I like to start by letting the reel hang straight down from the loading band so that I always have the reel inserted in a constant position. Once I've put it in place and laid the loading band aside, I line up the knob correctly according to its indexing dot and put it into place. The next step is to put the film guide in. And here's a quick overview from a different angle showing these same steps. Now you're ready to prepare your load of film. Bonus old timer tip, never rewind your film all the way back into the cartridge. Just crimp the leader so you'll know it's exposed. If you do this, you'll never have to fool with film leader retrievers and other silly stuff. It's easy to trim the film off, making sure the corners are nicely rounded, then pull out exactly five sprocket holes worth of the film. If the film's got a curl in it, bend it back a little bit to try to get some of it out. And then, bend the first two sprocket holes worth back just a little so they're angled up. Now drop it in the compartment with the leader pointed straight up and watch what I do with my thumb. Fold the film over, roll it back, slip it under the guide bar like this. Now you can put the edge of the film on the end of the film guide and use it as a little shelf. It'll be a lot easier to clip on the clip when you've got something to press down against, just like this. I like to take up the slack in the loading band by turning the knob, and if you've done everything correctly, this should take just about exactly one turn. 
make a final check before you put the lid on to make sure everything is in the proper place. Now you can advance the film onto the reel by turning the knob and when it stops pull the cutter bar to cut off the end of the film. Now turn the knob a few more times to get the film fully loaded onto the reel. Here's a quick review from a different angle. That was with 35mm film. If you're using the 120 film module it's a little more complicated. One problem that I ran into was that the first frame of my film was always fogged. With older cameras the film spacing is different from modern 120 cameras and the lab box doesn't allow for this. You'll have to test your own camera to make sure that you're not going to have this problem. And if you felt loading 35mm film in the lab box was a little complicated, well 120 film is even worse. There are lots of extra steps. You have to thread the paper backing through a slot and then pull it out to separate it from the film. You have to untape the film. The tape often gets stuck on the inside of the lab box. And then you have to attach it to the clip and close the lid just as you did with 35mm film. While doing this you need to remember to manage the light trap opening and closing it at the proper times. There's a lot to go wrong. Another problem that I ran into was that because 120 film is wider and has less support it can come off the reel and touch together as you're loading it and unlike conventional tanks there's no way to feel this as you're loading it. If it does happen your film will be ruined and you won't know it until you process it. So what should you choose? Well in all honesty I feel the conventional tank is a better choice for most people starting out. It's less expensive so you don't have as much money invested if you decide you just don't like developing film. It's simpler, there are fewer parts, loading in the dark is not a difficult skill to learn and you can use that skill to develop more rolls simply by getting a larger tank and more reels. The lab box is a better choice only if you can easily afford the considerable extra cost. If you really have a problem with working in a dark room or using a changing bag, if you like the fact that it's very tidy and drip free, and you only tend to shoot one roll at a time. Finally, the lab box has a useful but undocumented kind of hack feature. You can develop partial rolls of film. Ars Imago doesn't talk about this capability at all, so you're totally on your own if you want to use it. But on the old Rondinax tanks, it was actually a documented feature. They even included a little gauge to show you how many frames you'd loaded. Why would you want to develop a partial roll? Well, you can try out outdated film, you can test developing times, you can see if your old camera you found at a flea market actually works, if you're just in a hurry to shoot a few frames. But remember, this is only a hack. Don't use it on a fully exposed roll of film because you'll probably cut right through a frame and who knows, it might be your best one. Don't use it if you want to conserve film. You lose two frames every time you cut and you can't really control exactly where the cut will be. But if you want to try it anyway, here's how you do it. First, you trim and load your film into the lab box as usual. Take up the slack and then turn the knob the number of turns shown on the chart, which you have to make yourself. Then you cut with the cutting lever, finish winding your partial roll onto the reel, and develop normally. When you're done, just take out the cartridge with the unused film and it's ready to use again. How much do you turn the knob? Well, it depends on your camera. No two are exactly alike. I made this chart by testing my own camera using a scrap roll of film to see how many turns it took to advance a certain number of frames. You'll need to do the same with your own camera to get predictable results. And don't forget, you'll need to thoroughly wash and dry everything before your next development session. So to summarize, the lab box has some useful tricks. I've actually been using mine quite a lot, but for most people, especially if you're just starting out, a conventional tank is a better choice. That's my honest opinion. Thanks.